I'm Insomniac, and this is the Islander Southhold. Okay, uh, so everybody skips these intros anyway, so we don't have one today. Only thing to note before we get started, all of the specs on this watch are down in the video description. And that's it. Let's get into the watch. The case on this watch is substantial in every way. The design is thick, bold, and defined. The quality and attention to detail are solid, and it's heavy. The website lists the weight of the whole watch at 182 grams, and a lot of that is the watch body itself. The machining is very well done, and I like this break in the finishing where the beveled side of the case that separates the top and side is nicely polished. The screw down case back is solid and embossed with fine detail, and the crown is actually one of the better crowns I've come across recently. Not only is it the right size for this case proportionately, but it has great grip to it and an excellent ratio for setting the watch so you can turn through the hours quickly. Lastly, we have the bezel. I love the kind of pale dark blue color they used here. The insert is made of ceramic with loom fillings for the minute markers, and the almost coin edge has a pretty good grip to it, maybe not amazing for use with wet hands, but plenty grippy enough for dry fingers. And the bezel action is great. The unidirectional 120 click mechanism is consistent, sets in place well, and has no slop or play between clicks. It's a nice, solid case overall. Under the domed, anti-reflective sapphire crystal, you have a very well thought out dial with great detail. I'll start out with one of the only things I don't really love, that's the brand logo. Go back and watch my review on the ISL 79 if you want a longer explanation as to why I'm not a fan of the logo. At the outer edge of the dial you have a steeply angled chapter ring with printed line markers for the minutes. Then down on the flat portion of the dial we start with a rich deep blue with an almost sunburst like finish that gently fades to black out at the outermost edge. You have large applied hour markers with larger markers at 12, 3, and 9. Then under each hour marker you have a small printed 24 hour track, giving you a simple reference for the PM hours in 24 hour format. At 6 o'clock you have a date window, and here's something that blew me away because I bring it up as something I wish watch brands would do with their date discs, but almost nobody does. They have a dial colored date disc to match the dial. Thank you. That's a small detail that most watch brands get wrong in my opinion. I also like the tall but neat font they used for the numerals here. It's small, but it's easy to read. Last we have the hands, which are almost perfect. Stylistically, they're the right shape for this watch. I love the fact that the hour hand is a vastly different shape and length, so you can easily differentiate it from the minute hand in low light situations. The hands are the perfect length for this dial. And I even like the sporty orange second hand, which looks good against the dark blue backdrop and adds a tiny bit of pop along with the 200 meter printing above the date window. The only thing I don't love, although this isn't an issue per se, this is just me being picky, is the fact that the innermost parts of all three hands are black. I would have rather the whole hands been white or maybe a matching blue so those parts blend into the dial. It's not ugly or an eyesore, but like I said, I don't necessarily love it. Overall though, this is a great dial. The only usable complication on this watch is the date at 6 o'clock, which I already raved about in the dial section, so I won't bore you with all that again. It's a useful complication and it works, so no complaints here. The loom on this watch is C3 Super Luminova, and you have generous amounts of it everywhere. As you can see here, everything that you'd want to glow, glows, and it glows bright and even. Even more impressive than that though in my experience is how easily this watch picks up a loom charge. Even from the standard indoor lights in my office, it picks up enough charge to show well in darker rooms and it lasts a long while. This is the kind of loom filling I like to see, and because of that it's getting the highest score I can give it without being in the perfect 10 category, which is generally reserved for tritium tubes and cheater tricks like Indiglo. Time to glance on this watch is almost perfect. The hands and markers all contrast against the dark backdrop beautifully. The hands are perfect lengths for this dial and all of the hands have clear tips to them to easily indicate where they're pointing. The only small subtraction here for me is the super steep angle of the chapter ring, which happens to display the only individual minute markers on the watch. You can definitely see them, but depending on what angle you look at the watch from, some of those markers are out of view. Not a big deal at all but that's the situation. Overall, it's a breeze to read the time on this watch at a quick glance.
bracelet on this watch is your standard three link design with a fairly standard fold over locking deployment clasp. Visually, there's nothing really special about it, although it does match the finishing of the case perfectly. What I like here are the couple of details that make using the bracelet more user friendly. First of all, these links use screw pins for sizing, which is simpler and quicker than struggling with standard push pins, and you have fine adjusters at the clasp for getting the size just right without having to add or remove an additional link. I found it to be sturdy and fairly comfortable throughout the day, and the weight of the bracelet balanced out the weight of the chunky watch body well, so it was a good choice for this watch. Last but not least, we have value. As of the time of this video, Long Island Watch sells these on their site for $299. Long story short, I've read in my comment sections on some of my other Islander Watch videos that I'm not the only one that likes the Long Island Watch logo kind of slapped all over these watches. And although they're making a splash in the budget watch world, the brand name itself doesn't necessarily hold weight yet. So if you're a brand snob, then I'm guessing this might not be for you. I'm also surprised that you're still watching if you're one of those. But if you're looking for value, to put it plainly, this is a pound for pound contender in the $300 range price point in the current dive watch market when you break it down to build quality and features. So I actually think it's a very solid value at that price point. To see my review on another Islander watch that you might want to get to know better, click here.